What's up guys, Joe Youngblood with Tradger Farms. I'm a whitetail habitat specialist with Whitetail Habitat Solutions <laughs> alongside Jeff Sturgis and the gang. There is literally a bee on my phone right now. I uh, hope everyone is doing well. We're out here uh, working on mock scrapes today. And uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. We are kind of mixing it up a little bit. Um, we have numerous areas where our scrapes are uh, have trees and other, you know, perfect ways to hang a vine. Um, part of our strategies is that, uh, you know, we really have to keep things as natural as possible. And I think many of you, we've had a ton of great feedback. Things work very well. Um, and those vines grow in most of our forests. So they're easier to find, they are cheap uh, to set up. But there's also a couple areas where maybe we're hunting some fields. Um, if you guys have been following along this channel for a while, you know that, you know, we had probably two thirds field that we've been reclaiming over the last few years. And, um, you know, some of those areas, it's just not conducive to, sorry, this bee is ha after me. Uh, they're not conducive to hanging, you know, uh, a vine. So we're gonna be doing things a little bit differently. We're gonna be putting up some of these kind of artificial um, scrapes in a way with a limb and uh, wanted to show you guys um, some of the process for what we were doing. Again, these are not our first choice, right? The mock vine um, and that mock scrape is always gonna be our number one choice. And then maybe some of you have seen in some of Jeff's videos, uh, he will grab like a cedar or a tree that the deer really like to play with and he will cut that off and then bury that in the field as kind of a, a scrape tree, if you will, and that works good. Got Mike with me here today, having a lot of fun. You guys probably recognize him from some past videos helping me out here on the farm. Um, but in this instance where I really don't have any cedars, I don't really wanna go buy one. I have some of these posts laying around. We went and grabbed some spray paint and some Flex Seal, and I wanna show you guys how we're doing this. So we're taking some of these posts, and these are five, six inch posts, and we're using some flex seal uh, on the ends of these, if you can see. And basically I got these from my wife's family. They uh, do some cattle and things like that in Georgia. Um, that's where she's from. And they recommend, you know, using some of this, this flex seal and putting it on the bottoms of the posts, either on both ends, really, on one end that goes in the ground because of the moisture and on the other end, just from the drying and rotting and things like that, even though they are treated, um, it helps them to prevent splintering, which if you guys have worked with any of these wood posts, you know that even sometimes when you buy them, they have these big cracks down the sides and, and uh, they can start uh, splitting and looking pretty ugly. Um, or worst case, if you're, if you're t um, keeping animals in, you know, you don't want those to go for sure. So we, on both ends, we can spray this flex seal and uh, it'll keep a nice um, kind of seal on that, a little bit of a, a weather bearing um, barrier, if you will, and uh, give us some help. Hopefully these last a little longer. The other fun thing we're going to do, I'll show you guys when we get out there, is um, potentially a horizontal rub. We haven't done one uh, ever, and it's not something that we commonly do, but I do oftentimes like to put these out, um, things like this, and have fun with it, see how it works. Again, I've never done it. Um, I would imagine uh, I do not see deer rubbing horizontal trees in the wild, so it kind of makes sense that it wouldn't work, but it's kind of been a craze, and I kind of want to... Um, you know, test it out for myself, whether it's true or debunk the myth. Uh, so that'll be kind of fun. And we got some lag bolts and uh, we'll do something like that as well, especially in an area maybe like um, kind, of, kind of those, you know, rut cruising or in between, you know, staging areas. There's no food there. You can see the bee. There's no food there, but maybe kind of another benefit to draw that deer, something to play with if it happens to work. So we will bring that to you guys as well. We're going to get these, let them dry a little bit, load them into the truck. We're going to drive out and then uh, we'll be getting after it. All right, guys, so to start, we're actually doing our uh, horizontal rub first. We're taking our little uh, seal flex. What's it called again? Flex seal. Flex seal, gorilla yeah. Seal, our whatever. Gorilla Gorilla makes one too. And putting that at the bottom. So that'll prevent some splitting. You can also put some at the top. I don't know if that color at the top will be skittish to the deer at all, but typical fence post, I would also spray some at the top. Got our holes. We're going at least, we cut one of these eight footers in half which almost seems, they're only four feet tall. We're going in about 20 inches. So yeah. they're, uh, you know, 28 inches above the ground. And then we got some lag bolts. And instead of using wire, like a lot of people do, like fence wire and stuff and kind of wrap around a lot, we're deciding to kind of go the lag bolt route. I think, you know, some nice long ones that uh, maybe we'll pre-drill kind of a little hole. I'll show you that. And then send that lag bolt in into the side should be enough to, uh, you know, take some abuse. We'll find out though. Um, so we'll get this done. All right, guys, we're looking okay on this. I'll show you what I did here. 
I believe those, you know, electrical bits to create holds, I think they're a spade bit, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so we used a three quarter inch spade bolt and then you can probably see the, uh, the lag bolt in, inside of here. And uh, um, I forget the, the uh, length five lag sixteen. bolts, but five sixteenths and they're probably six inches or so. And so we did that an inch or two and then drilled that into the post which is pretty dang good. These are very solid. And then to make it a little bit better, we just took another one, put some pressure on it and slid that in. So this is very sturdy. And then I think about this too, is if I wanted to, I could even go grab some additional, you know, wire and, and kind of figure eight it around that. But there's not too many ways it could be much better. You could put cement in if you wanted, but again, we did the flex seal. It should be deep enough, so it's not going anywhere. Um, we didn't do it on top because then there would be no leverage for the post. We kind of put it off to the side here so that the pushing, you know, it has something against it as a backstop. And we went in a little over 20 inches um, into the ground. And then we used just a little socket on the uh, impact drill and drove it in. Um, only other things left we need to do are put that camera on this sucker so we can fully test it and maybe just put a little bit of flex seal on the top to prevent any future splitting um, because if it does happen to work fairly well, then we are going to leave this for years to come, I would say. So um, I will bring you guys pictures or uh, full intel in the future and uh, on our way to do some of the other uh, scrapes. One last thing on this, guys, is position. So I want you to look back. We got a uh, stand back there in that tree and we have a nice lane here. So if the deer is facing this way, Okay, and the arrow's coming this way. We have a nice quartering away shot. So placement wise, again, this is just a fun test for us. I'm not out here saying that everyone should go do this, but I think many of you have seen it on social media and uh, it'll just be fun to check out. So that's kind of the premise um, and should give us a good shot angle if they're just kind of head on rubbing this horizontal rub. All right, so before we start our next project, quick update on our uh, food plot here. Things are looking pretty dang good. We got the, uh, the brassicas on the far side over there, our uh, Big Boost Brassica blend. And we got our Power Greens blend uh, going here next to this clover that I've pretty much sprayed five or six times to get rid of. <laughs> so I either need to be a little more due diligent or next time if I do need to tickle the soil anymore, depending on which way we're going with it, um, I will disc that clover back in and have some more annuals. I think last year we had a decent amount of doe showing up, especially early season. If you saw the video where dad got his first deer, it was an awesome one, I'll link it here um, so you guys can check it out if you haven't. Um, but you know, we were seeing decent deer then. You can see we have good traffic through this. Um, they kind of, you know, will walk this field edge here or maybe even this field edge. So in this kind of crossing, we're gonna go ahead and put this, this scrape tree here. And you can see we're also only 20 yards it looks so much further on the camera <laughs> but you know a good 20 yards easy shot nice bow shot in that vertical window um, but main premise is not only are we within shooting range we are coupling it with some of the natural movement mike did a great job of pointing that out and we got different edges right white tails being creatures of edge we're smacking them in the face with this branch so it's going to give us our best opportunity for them to potentially use this um, you can see i have a couple trees i am not going to tie paracord 20 yards across this gap to hang a vine. I think that would look ridiculous. It would be kind of sketch. Um, so we're in an area like this, uh, you know, we have a cedar that is potentially a natural scrape tree. But other than that, that's pretty much all that we have right here. This finger was all brushy, nasty stuff. Not a ton of, of um, you know, scrape limbs kind of hanging out, if you will. So we'll get this put in and we'll show you guys uh, what we're working with. All right, guys, as you can see, Mike's genius idea. We saw this uh, flag holder. We gave it a little spray paint. We got this scrape out. Now the branch is fairly heavy, so we'll probably trim some of this just to lighten it a little bit. But I like to have a little bit of, you know, shrubbery of stuff. And the nice thing is, one, you can always change the angle on this with this flag holder. You can adjust it how you want to. And then when the stick breaks or whatever, you come back out here, you want to throw a new limb in there. It's really not that hard. You unscrew it, put a new one in, you're good to go. So we will trim this up. We will also be Kind of scratching the bottom here get them going especially with this clover again set the camera within shooting distance and we're good to go any intel i get on this guys i will send you some pictures and get them on the next video so 
you guys can uh, judge for yourself. All right, guys, other things that I have to mention that I love. One, we spray painted this some. Uh, so it's kind of a mixture of brown, green, uh, looks a little more natural. Two, we are also going to zip tie some of these leftover branches that we have onto here. So it looks kind of shrub, shrub and tree-like anyway. Now this is a, a, actually just a crab apple limb that I had to cut down over there for another surprise that we're gonna talk about later. Um, I honestly doubt this is probably the best branch, if I'm being serious. I think mm -hmm. um, from what I hear, um, some maple oak, like red oak, uh, was one that the Midwest whitetail guys like, um, but are great options to use. So we can easily play around with these. And that's what's nice about this flag holder is if another time you wanna swap it out, or even you come here for a hunt and you come to this stand so the wind's still good, you swap out the branch, maybe you make one at the house and bring it, whatever. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, and then lastly, look at this guy. He is smarter than he looks, okay? <laughs> so he's using zip ties to get these fastened. Any more weight on this um, flag holder, I don't think is, is gonna be too good, guys. We, we did put some bigger uh, screws in, but now to get these branches stuck to it, we've combined, I did not really think of this, we combined the zip ties so you can get multiple around it. And then you can just stick these branches in the zip ties and get this thing kind of just looking, you know, a little more natural, right? That's our premise. Uh, whatever looks like deer are naturally using in the wild that could be advantageous for us is kind of the route that we're trying to take. So we'll see how that works. Um, and, you know, even though they might not rub the post, which I don't really expect them to anyway, we'll dig up this and get the camera on it. And then we'll be moving on to our next one. All right, guys, we are wrapping up. It is so hot. Labor Day weekend. 90 degrees, I think. So it's almost really midday, but we're about done. Got this ground scraped up nice. We did find this nice red oak branches, threw it in there. So we're gonna have some good actual tests ourselves that we can bring to you guys. No hearsay here. Um, yeah, so let's uh, leave these different types. Let's uh, bring back to you what's working good. I can show you back up and yeah, should be in that tree up there. We got a, a stand, it's a little further shot. Uh, 30 to 40 yards out to here. We got our, our trees that if you guys have been keeping up with the channel that we planted this year in this section, I think it's just 10. But I will tell you at least six out of these 10 are already out of the tree tubes. I don't know if you can see those in the back there. They're already out of the tree tubes. And I just think that's so cool for first year. Um, you know, I'll see how these do in just two, three years. Uh, really excited about that. So put some more mulch over some maybe next year, not overdo it and try and mow and keep some of these weeds at bay. Um, so excited to see those. Let me know what questions you guys have. And again, can't wait to bring, uh, bring these to you in the season. Hopefully some good video. Talk to you guys soon.